Hey, it's me. Tom Bodet is a household name, an author, columnist, radio host, voice actor, and humorist. Tom Bodet is the voice behind the award-winning Motel 6 radio commercials. You know, the ones that end with that trademark, those words of comfort that they will leave the light on for you. He also has a very entertaining Twitter feed, at Tom Bodet. So how are you, sir? Well, good, good. How are you today, Paul? I'm doing real well. You know, I just applied a lot of labels to you. Radio personality, voice actor. Who would you say Tom Bodet is? Oh, gosh. I mean, that all, you know, all those would, would probably stick to the cover all if I was a NASCAR guy. Um, yeah, I'm all those things. That's certainly how I, uh, how I make a living. Um, I'm also a lifelong woodworker and, and a father of three sons. And I would say that those two things probably use up more time than everything you had on your list there <laughs> these days. But uh, um, I would say that generally I'm a very contented man. I'm happily married. I love my family. I love where I live. And I love the things I get to do every day. So you would say that the woodworking is what you're the most passionate about. Well, these days, you know, as I uh, as I start to wind down my professional ambitions and stop looking for more noise to make out there in that world, I uh, I find myself just craving more time in my shop and making things and and pushing my my skills in in that direction. I've always enjoyed working with my hands. I've always done. I used to build houses for a living before I started working in radio. And uh, I find it gives me more satisfaction than just about anything else can. So that's uh, that's worth paying attention to if you've got something like that in your life. What misconceptions do you think the public might have about you? Misconceptions? Yeah. Um, oh, I don't know. I'm probably like what they say about New York City. There's nothing you can say about me that isn't true. Um, <laughs> some. Some people think I'm 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 kind of stupid, and I certainly can be. And uh, other people think I'm you know just just clever and smart and warm and funny, and I certainly can be that too. So uh, I don't know if people have any misconceptions about me at all. It used to be that when people meet me for the first time, they they'd always say, "I thought you'd be older," but that doesn't happen as often as it used to. So. <laughs> How would you say that you are like a Motel 6? How, uh, like, how am I like a Motel 6? Yeah. Gosh. I'm open for business. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll take good care of you if you end up staying with me. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> what did it feel like for you the first time you you heard your voice on the radio? Oh, I hated it. Still hate it. Doesn't everybody? People think just because you're in the recording business that you still don't hate the sound of your own voice. That's not true. And uh, when when we're done with a session, whether it's Motel 6 or anything else, and it comes time for the producers and the others to listen through the reels and, and start making selections, I get out of there. I can't stand it. Why do you think that is? Because it doesn't sound like what we hear in our heads, right? And uh, that's that's what it is to me. Is uh, I always I always sound a little different than what I thought I was, and so I just find that the the dissonance, if you will, just gives me tension. So I don't like listening to it. One of the things that you're known for is the time that you spent in Alaska. How did your time in Alaska affect you? Oh, I mean, in every single way a person can be affected. I went up there when I was 21 to just kind of work for the summer and ended up staying for 23 years. And, uh, I, you know, I did everything there. I, that's, uh, as the old Neil Young song, uh, goes, all of my changes were there. You know, I, uh, I kind of grew up there and, uh, and, and entered into my middle age and I got sober there and, uh, um, and, uh, and the world looked a little different to me, and I'm I'm living out in Vermont, still in the country, still surrounded by beautiful country and wonderful people, but that's kind of the way I like things. What about Vermont suits you? Well, I like it 
for for raising my I raised my older son in Alaska, which was great, and he's a wonderful young man now. But we live far from everything. I mean, he did not get to see a lot of uh, you know America and the and the greater world as you know as it as it is the way most of our you know fellow countrymen and uh, and and human beings live. And and I like raising kids here in Vermont because we get everything. You can get in Alaska, like I say, lots of outdoors, healthy countryside, great fresh food, all of that. And we're two hours from Fenway Park in Boston. We're four hours from New York City. These kids have been to the Museum of Natural History in New York probably four times, and they're still living at home. So it's a wonderful location, I should say, to to raise a family. Great schools here, great schools all around. Uh, so we very intentionally picked it for that reason because we wanted – we wanted to raise our, our our kids in a place where they could they could grow up and really really see as much as they possibly could of the world as kids and and uh, we feel really good about our choice. We're joined by Tom Bodette. You told me over email. I have found over the years that I am a favorite lyric among overworked, road weary, country redneck musicians. I wanted to know. Do you have a favorite song that mentions you? Um, no, that would be impossible unless it was by Bonnie Raitt, I think. But all the songs that mention me, I'm either like a punchline or this one here is disgusting. Is uh, It's called Let's Make Love Like Tom Bodette. And, <laughs> and the bridge is We'll Leave the Lights On. And that makes my blood sort of curdle when I hear that. And you had mentioned another one to me, which I, I was not familiar with. What was it again, Paul? It was from Kip Attaway. And the song is called Black Diamonds, and the lyric is, Tom Bodette, turn off your light. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, that's all right, I guess. <laughs> what is he saying there? Like, he doesn't want to stay with motel six anymore or he just doesn't want to stay go anywhere anymore good question he doesn't want to be found anymore in the in the song he says that he wants to find a little cabin somewhere and just disappear oh i see so it wasn't a customer complaint glad to hear that (laughs) well you've mentioned bonnie Raitt now you mentioned neil young could we assume that you're a big music fan Oh, I love, I listen to a lot of music. Um, those, uh, you know, those two that I mentioned, of course, are from my, you know, my, that's the music I grew up with or came of age with. Uh, I should say I also dearly love uh, mainstream jazz. I, I listen to all the old favorites from, you know, Miles Davis, the Thelonious Monk and, and, and that um, sort of genre of, um, of jazz. I like, uh, I tend to the outlaw country. When I listen to country, I tend to the Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings uh, variety uh, more than uh, more than probably the mainstream stuff. But, but those guys are pretty mainstream too these days, aren't they? Probably a difficult question, but could you pick just a favorite all-around song? What's well, a song I always go to? Um, you know, I don't... That would that was is really tough because I'm you know I'm a moody bastard like most of us and uh, sometimes I just got to put on music that suits me in a particular mood and I don't you know Paul if you gave me six days to think about it I could probably come up with an overall favorite but put on the spot like this uh, nothing is just is is springing to mind I do have to say that. Uh, if I want to just calm down and feel okay, if I put on Miles Davis' Kind of Blue, it works every time, any cut on the record. And that that would have to be, if I had to pick an all-around, like if you were going to condemn me to an isolated cell and there's only one record that I could listen to and I was going to have to listen to it every day, all day long, that's the one I'd pick, because I think it would take the longest to drive me insane. <laughs> there was a revelation one time on the radio that early on in Jules' career, 
you helped her out a little bit. I'm hoping you can tell the listeners, what are your memories of Jewel before she became this superstar? Well, I I knew Jewel. Um, I first met her, I should say I first saw her perform when she was like 12. I knew her dad, Otz, pretty well. Um, and her uncle, Otto, and in fact, her aunt, Sharon, worked for me for a number of years as my uh my bookkeeper is a small town, you know, and the Kilchers were, uh, um, everybody knew them. And when Jewel, I mean, Jewel was, you know, she showed her talent from a very young age and everybody could see it. And when it came time um, where she was, the town, I should say, was trying to raise some money to uh, send her off to Interlochen um, as a uh, teenager to go get some formal training they, you know, they did an outdoor, uh, big outdoor concert and everybody came and they raised some money and there was some, uh, there was still some need there. It didn't raise everything they need. And I, uh, I helped out with, uh, with what was left over, but I was certainly not alone in, in helping Jewel get on her way there. I would say the entire community of Homer was, you know, basically was unified in saying, you know, girl, you got to get out of here and go do something because <laughs> you got something to show. And, and she certainly did. She's a wonderful artist and, uh, and also a, a terrific human being on top of it. What would you say is the best compliment that you, Tom Baudet, has ever received? Well, I once read a thing by... Maya Angelou, who said that people will never remember what you say to them, but they will remember how you made them feel. And every once in a while, a friend or somebody that I might have stopped and talked to at the grocery store will send me a note or an email and and just say, uh, you know, thanks for your time today. I, I really felt better after after we talked and sometimes you don't really say anything at all. You know, you just kind of be there and uh, how you are with people. And that's, you know, to me, that's, that's the most important thing. And when I, when I get that kind of a, a note back, I realize that I've, I've done it. I've, I've achieved what I hope to be in my life, which is that, that person that people can, can come to. And then when they walk away, they feel a little bit better. So I would say, you know, that, Tell me that. Uh, tell me that I helped. Going through life as you, with the perspectives that you have, the experiences that you've had, what would you say is the best thing about being Tom Bodet? Oh gosh, um, that's one of the most self-indulgent questions that's ever been posed to me, Paul. Um, What's the best thing about me? I mean, that just, I just, I don't know that I'm even equipped to answer that because uh, I am, you know, racked with self-loathing just like every other human being. So I can't I pick it. I, I think probably the best thing about me is that I am like the generic American. I am average height, average weight. I don't think I'm average age anymore, but I was for a long time. I'm the kind of people they design airline seats to fit. <laughs> so I have gone through my life perfectly comfortable. They always have my size in stores. My feet aren't too big or too small. Hats fit me. This is the best thing about being me is I am so freaking ordinary that I feel sometimes like the world was designed specifically for me. Oh, and I'm right-handed. So there you go. <laughs> well, my last question is also, I admit, a little self-indulgent, very open-ended. I just want to give you the stage, just give you the microphone for our very diverse audience. What would you say? What would I say? Totally open-ended. To all of your, your, your listeners out there in Radio Land, is this, a, is this yeah. the thing? I, I, you know, I'm 63 years old now, and I enjoy my life tremendously. And like anyone else who's crested the hill of 60 understands that time is flying by. And 
you can do the math pretty easily that we've got a lot less time ahead of us than we've had behind us. And I find that I, I just try not to waste a day. I've become far more selfish, I think, in the way I spend my days. Although I have to say my selfishness has changed in nature, too, where uh, I, might, I might find that, uh, you know, volunteering uh, um, with friends of mine to, to cook for the homeless shelter would be a thing I would do for fun now, which I might not have thought of when I was 30, 35. But I do find that I only want to do things with my time and spend time with the kind of people who give me enjoyment, satisfaction, and I would say to anyone, anytime, is do that. Life is so short. Life is so precious. And for whatever lug- little luxuries you may have or I may have to make choices in our lives, make the ones for you. Do something for, that makes you feel better. That's, that's all I've got to say. Well, ladies and gentlemen, for more information, you can visit Bodet.com on Twitter at Tom Bodet. Mr. Bodet, thank you so much for spending time with us. Yeah, well, thanks thanks for having me, Paul. I've, I've uh, enjoyed the conversation. You asked some very, uh, very interesting questions. I hope I, I gave uh, some adequate replies. I think you hit a home run. All right. Well, thank you, Paul. You take All care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.